We just completed the Milford Track in New Zealand. It's a gorgeous hike in the New Zealand wilderness. Four days with just you, birds, crystal clear, perfect water. If you want to join us on this little adventure, stick around and we'll take you through the whole thing from start to finish. Ow! Ugh. Ten years ago, when I first started traveling, I made a bucket list of things that I wanted to see and do in life. And for the past ten years, Justin and I have been ticking things off of our bucket lists together. All of those many years ago, I decided that I needed to do the Milford Track. The problem with that is that it made it onto my bucket list when I was younger and stronger and way more into the idea of hiking for four days through the wilderness. So here we are, two months after booking this, about to spend four days with 25 pounds of equipment on our back, just hoping that we're gonna be okay. How are you feeling? I have no words. <laughs> I'm nervous. I didn't really train as much as I should have. I'll be fine. This is either too much food or not enough food. I guess we'll let you know after we're done. This is my backpack. That's it, right? Yep. No more. It's way too heavy to be carrying it. It would be nice but to it's good to carry coffee. Oh my god. That looks bad already. Do they register all your stuff so that if you discard some of it along the way, they'll track you down? <laughs> Make sure that um, you are safe. We left our valuables in a locker and then we left our clothes just in the bus terminal office. We're feeling good. From here, you take a boat and the boat will drop you off at the very first bit of the track. This is unreal. Look how beautiful this is. Welcome aboard the Fjordland Express for our trip across Lake Tiano. My name is Ryan. I'm going to be your crew for the day. Now, Lake Tiano is actually quite a large lake. Its main body stretches roughly north to south for just around 66 kilometers. We're going to be traveling around half that distance. Okay, here we go. The start of the 33.5 mile Milford track. 33.5 miles or kilometers? Miles. Okay. We All got right. this. I'm actually excited now. Are you? Because you've so. been nervous all day. I've been nervous all day. I'm here. I'm excited. I have no other choice but to complete this and be fine. <laughs> so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> we have to do this. There is no uh, other choice. Wow, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful already. If you don't feel like carrying so much weight, you can pay between $1,800 and $3,900 to stay in that hut. You don't need to carry a sleeping bag, you don't need to carry food, because they have food prepared for you they at all the huts. They have a bar, they have a chef. Oh, chef! They have showers. Showers! <laughs> Hello, pal. You're very good at hopping. I like your hops. Hi there. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Don't be scared. When we arrived, it felt like people were just swarming off of the boat, but it didn't take very long for everybody to kind of spread out. And now it feels like we have the whole woods to ourselves. There's 80 people who get to do what we're doing today, but 40 of them are with group tours and 40 of them are not. And everybody spreads out and it's like there's nobody here. The fact that they make this so hard to get a spot makes it so that it's essentially a private hike. We arrived right in time for a little nature walk with the DOC ranger who lives here. He is delightful. This is sphagnum moss here and it's very, very absorbent. They tell me dried sphagnum moss will absorb. 20 times its own weight in water. This here's a, a blue sun orchid. What's made those whole? Hey, hoo grub. Hoo hoo grub, well done. You see the little berries coming on it? Yeah, yes. oh, yes. now, When they're ripe, you can dry them and crush them and make coffee. Wow. wow. All right, we're gonna go take a swim. This is the perfect weather for this. Someone said the water is refreshing. Yeah, that means Freezing. very, very cold. Oh God, that's cold. <laughs> It feels so good! It feels so good! 
the hike up here was really short. The whole time I was wanting to go for a little swim. So happy to finally be doing that. These rocks look so soft and pretty and inviting, but they hurt. Oh, oh, we brought water shoes and everything, but we forgot them at the hut. We're pretty hungry now, so we're gonna go climb on some rocks and then go eat. The sand flies are coming out. Justin's gotten a couple bites. I'm not getting bitten yet, but it's only a matter of time. I have never felt more refreshed in my life. <laughs> it's so hard to capture how beautiful it is. I am starving. I am so, so hungry. I'm, I'm ready. Regular hungry. We've switched. We're gonna dry out our swimsuits and make some food. We've only been on the trail for a couple of hours, but we have regrets already. We rationed the chocolate. Should have brought all the chocolate. Rationing the chocolate was a mistake. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering if all the chocolate is worth the weight in chocolate, yes. The answer is yes. I'm finding the huts to be really clean and well maintained. It's less chaotic than I thought. I thought that having this many people sharing a space would be worse, but it doesn't seem to be There's so. There's a few open bunks too left. So really? I guess a couple people didn't make it there. Huh. I laid down to take a nap and I've been out like a light for like an hour. So I think I'm gonna go to sleep. I know it's light out, but it's like 9 p.m. But I need to go brush my teeth. So I gotta put on my boots, but I'm starting to realize that in a sea of this many boots, I I don't know which ones are mine. <laughs> Justin hung them up for me. I don't, I don't know which of these are my boots. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, I understand now. Okay, okay, okay. This is these these are these are my good night. <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to be really mindful of this trip was to enjoy myself, <laughs> which probably sounds weird, but when I go on these trips, I am having tons of fun and it's really high energy, but my brain is going a mile a minute and I never really feel like I'm taking a break, like I'm relaxing and I'm hoping that will give me some time to just zone out a little bit, just hear the, the birds the sound of the river. I feel good, I slept well. The noise didn't bother me much. It was more the, <laughs> my hips ached on the mattress. <laughs> I really wanted to get a good solid 15 to 30 minutes of stretching in to help with back pain and that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm feeling pretty high energy. There are lots of little side quests on the Milford track and we actually got extra side quests because the ranger at the visitor center asked us to send an envelope to the ranger at the Clinton hut. So we had that letter and then one of the passengers from the early morning who was doing the Milford track forgot his wallet <laughs> on the bus and so they sent us with a note for him as well to let him know they have his wallet and it'll be waiting for him safely at the end of the trail. And so everybody was laughing and calling us the Milford Postal Service. It was very fun. But along the trail there's ways that you can go off to see some wetlands and other little side quests as well as going to the bathroom, which is the most important side quest. <laughs> Sandfly. So we're gonna take a pee break and keep going. I see a little birdie. Looks kind of like a chicken. The little chicken bird is called a wicca. A wicca? Wicca. I'm starting to feel little trickles of water, little droplets. It's definitely gonna to rain today, but it's only barely coming down now. But when it starts really raining, we're going to uh, cover our packs 
and get all rainproof. When it rains like this, it supposedly activates waterfalls everywhere, thousands and thousands of waterfalls. So it's actually great if it rains on day two, because then you get to see all the waterfalls. And then if we have a clear day tomorrow, then we'll have a good view over at McKinnon Pass. So cross your fingers. Oh, yeah. side quest. At about this point, my tripod fell out of my pocket, and it wasn't long before other hikers found it and spread the word up the trail, quickly reuniting us. The entire hike, I was so impressed by how nice everyone was and how much the other hikers were willing to help each other out. Oh, wow! Yay! Do we go down there? Side quest! <laughs> The side quests are the best! Another side quest. Hidden lakes. Oh, oh, oh. There's a oh. oh wow. This just might be the most worthy side quest yet. Woo! Good. That was just about as much rain as I was excited to hang out in. <laughs> mm. We just chatted with one of the guides for the guided tour group and we're five minutes from their lodge where there's tea and scones waiting for them. There's no tea and scones waiting for us at our hut. <laughs> we are both feeling very confident about tomorrow. It's gonna be long and it's gonna be hard, but we can handle this. About 30 minutes after we had lunch, I got this burst of energy. And I almost feel like I imagine how Justin feels when he says that he just gets this hiker's high, but I feel so energized, I feel so, like, I don't know, I just feel good. We found some little baby wucks, little fuzzy, fuzzy baby wucks. Hi, fuzzy baby. I like your fuzzy butt. Mama Wucka is on a mission and could not be bothered by us. Oh, <laughs> you find a good grabs? Yum! Wow, this hut looks like a chalet. <laughs> it's pretty nice looking. Dang. Oh man. Justin's mom I insisted that we bring this Asper cream. It's a numbing cream. And I'm gonna put it on my feet and on my back. 
I don't my legs. Because ouch. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you, every muscle in my body aches. Mostly my feet though, my feet hurt pretty badly. But there's no blisters on me or Justin's feet. We're doing really well. I'm feeling good, I only have one little sore spot right here and mm -hmm. that's it. They have a swimming hole at the Mentaro hut. I don't know why I did that with my sunglasses. <laughs> it is covered in sand flies, they are ruining everything. <laughs> but there's also a really pretty white flowering tree. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so you pretty. Just, if you keep moving, the sand flies leave you alone. Yes. So that's you, the trick. No sitting. No sitting. Yes, I went to the trouble of bringing slippers with me on a 33 mile hike. <laughs> The alpine parrot has been hanging out with us all morning. It's called Kia, and it makes quite a bit of racket. <laughs> so apparently, there was bunk drama last night. Justin, what was the bunk drama? So I woke up and we had headlamps, so we went into the kitchen area to pack everything. And then I realized that there was a woman sleeping. Someone, I guess, was snoring really loudly in their bunk. She asked whoever the person was to move into the kitchen. But and that's actually good, that's good etiquette. And they refused, so she moved herself. <laughs> And then of course I woke her up, so I feel bad about that. This morning uh, we woke up early and we got really lucky. We heard the kiwis. Kiwi are territorial. A mating pair of kiwis kind of picks an area and it's theirs. And so that's why it's hard to see them. And they only come out at night. They're yeah. Eternal. A lot of the birds here have interesting calls, don't they? Yeah, the birds sound like musical instruments. The birds sound fake. <laughs> I've never heard birds make sounds like these before. <laughs> this trail is so well maintained. It is completely free of trash and is one of the most pristine places I've ever had the pleasure to hike. It's the most hike. pristine hike I've ever been on. Yeah. It looks like it's an amusement park that has been maintained <laughs> so badly. It, it looks like a film fake. set. <laughs> it's just crazy how beautiful it is. Hey, your set's a little boring. Let me sprinkle flower petals on the path. I don't know how many of these walking shots I can give you guys today. It's gonna be going straight up for the first like two hours. <laughs> Justin said, we're gonna take it slow. Justin said, we're gonna be gentle and calm today. But Justin's knees aren't hurting, so Justin is going spinning up the mountain. I go, Justin, you don't feel like we're going a little fast? And he's like, no, I'm going slow. So I trained like crazy for this, but nothing has changed. Although I'm going at this pace and I'm not sobbing. So that's what's changed. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very good woo, Justin. We just made it to the highest point of the Milford track. This is the McKinnon Pass. The views are gorgeous and we feel fantastic. I did a lot of training, but we weren't sure if the training was gonna be enough to get us up here without the knee pain and the back pain and all the other things that we've been dealing with. Apparently our training paid off because that was so easy. <laughs> I do recommend hiking poles though. They helped out a ton. <laughs> They were saying that the wind chill factor for today might get to minus four? Five. Minus four or five? And they weren't joking, it is, it's pretty chilly up here. This part of the trail is very weird because it looks like it should be arid mountain terrain, but it's lush and wet like a rainforest. So the foliage looks like you should be in some sort of tropical island, but you're in the middle of a freezing mountain in New Zealand. It's very strange. We're heading to that waterfall right there.
I absolutely underestimated how hard going downhill would be. I'm usually really good and fast downhill, but with the weight on me, it definitely is putting pressure on my knees. We really don't want to twist an ankle or do anything goofy, and so I'm being very mindful of where I step. We just passed mile 19, which means we've done five miles in five hours, which is not a very impressive speed. I need food. <laughs> Two minutes, two minutes away, two minutes away from lunch. Two minutes, only two minutes. Holy crap, that was not easy. That's the lodge where all the fancy people stay. And they have a little hut here, a shelter, where we're gonna make some food. You can't even rest on this trail. You have to do like karate to keep all the bucks away from you. Yeah, Wait. Inside. Inside. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. We used the hot water that the uh, hut gave us to make lunch. My legs are shaking, but there is a runner here whose legs are also shaking. Ru running. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, ru you go run with them. Have fun. We are on a path to Sutherland Falls which is a big waterfall. The round trip hike is supposed to be an hour and a half, but knowing us, it'll take closer to two to two and a half. Ooh, we get to cross the river again. Oh, oh, pretty. I asked Justin, hey, do you want to bring your swimsuit? And he goes, no. This is a cicada. Hi, nice to meet you, I guess, bye. Now he is in the waterfall in his underwear and I don't have my swimsuit. <laughs> I want to swim? I think we might have found heaven because there are no sand flies over here. I don't think I'm ever leaving. Sutherland Falls is the biggest side quest of the Milford Trek. It's an hour and a half round trip unless you're like us. In that case, it'll take you more like two hours and it is absolutely the most worthwhile one. Side quest completed. <laughs> So we've gone past mile 20 and we went to the waterfall. Claire's on vacation so she will not be vlogging for the next hour until we get to the hut. No now I have an update on my hiker's high. <laughs> it is uh, gone. <laughs> I'm having withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> the downhill portion is way harder on your body than the uphill portion, at least for me, because you can really feel it on your knees. It's just hours and hours of going downhill and like uneven rocks, but very enjoyable still. But yeah, I'm definitely more tired. Amazing day, but definitely not as easy as I thought it was going to be. As a science experiment, I decided not to stop for any B-roll between the last shelter and Dumpling Hut. This is Dumpling Hut, we're approaching. And see if we could even make close to the time that they estimate. And we did five minutes faster than they said that we would. So really the reason we're slow is because of filming. That is the cleanest, freshest, most perfect, gorgeous, water I have ever had the pleasure of swimming in. It actually makes me emotional. Oh God, ah, ah, ah. the sand flies are here. Ah. How many Photography. Oh, we take pictures of people usually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not picking a numbers. It's not horrible, it's edible. Good morning from our last day on the Milford track. Today is supposed to be easy. Everyone keeps saying, today is not as bad as yesterday. Today is not as bad as yesterday. It's usually about six hours of walking. So Justin and I think that it'll take us seven to eight. We have to be there by 2 p.m. because the boat arrives at 2 p.m. So if we don't arrive in time, the boat leaves without us and we need the boat to get us out of here. Well, based on the sounds coming out of Justin, I'm feeling a little vindicated for how much pain I'm in because he's whining and uh, uh. Just my calves are really tight right now. I probably should have loosened up a little more. Yeah, 
we're sore. We've started to do the math and we don't really actually have that much time. We gave ourselves the buffer of 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And there are side quests today. Cool, very exciting side quests. So we're probably gonna be hustling and not filming very much today because we have to get back. There are bathrooms every two to three miles along the track. A lot of them are outhouses, but some of them are flushing toilets. We're in the middle of nowhere and have flushing toilets. We just did a 20 minute mile. Woo! Before New Zealand was settled, there weren't really any natural predators here. Over time, they brought different animals to the island that have wreaked havoc on the ecosystem here. Specifically, possums, rats, and especially stoats. I've never seen a stoat, but apparently it's similar to a weasel. Stoats are awful because they have a thing for killing. They don't just kill to eat, they also kill for fun. They eat birds, they eat the bird eggs, they eat all kinds of things. All along the trail are traps for the rats and stoats to try and keep their populations under control so that the birds can flourish, because the birds were here first. There's two little side quests here. One is called Bell Rock. You can climb under here and it's like a big cave under there and then right next to it is a view of a gorgeous waterfall. So this was one of the side quests that we really wanted to have time for today. We walked fast enough to save 10 minutes, so we're gonna make it fast. It's the most mystical, magical, beautiful waterfall so far but the sand flies are bad. We're leaving. <laughs> him swimming, I would suggest you get the latest boat out so you can swim and take a little more time on the last day. I think that would be worth it. What do you think, Claire? Yeah. That spot was just yeah, a sandy beach. I'm so jealous of Leon. So jealous. You think you're gonna be sick of it, but you won't be. You it won't be. You wanna go swimming. Yeah. I can't believe this is Justin's natural place. This is crazy. We've reached mile marker 33, which means that we're at a portion of the track that is really interesting. You'll notice it's a lot wider over here. And the reason it's wider is because over a hundred years ago, they decided to make this a horse and buggy ride. <laughs> so they tried really hard for two years to make a trail appropriate for a horse and buggy to bring tourists here to ride through the forest. It was actually their goal to do the entire Milford track like this, I think. And they quickly realized that wasn't gonna happen, but it means that this portion of the track is really nice and flat and wide. And we're almost done. Oh, look at this guy, he's dancing. Ugh. You know what? My spirits are also high. I'm feeling very accomplished. I do feel, I do, I do feel accomplished. We missed one side quest. And I'm actually really bummed about that side quest, but at some point along this trail is a rock where some people who worked on the track carved their names into a rock. And in that rock, they also put the date, which was 18 something something. So this has been a place where people have come to hike and see the wilderness for over a hundred years. It was the thing that really started the tourism industry here. So there's a lot of history in this track and I want you to just picture the women walking along this trail in their huge dresses and their hats. Oh, wow. We did it. We did it. High five. We did it. We did it. We finished. We're alive. Our time on the Milford track might be over, but our time in New Zealand is not. So make sure to subscribe so that you can follow the rest of our New Zealand adventures. We'll be here another two weeks. Bye. This is nice. I have one in there. There's 
one inside? Get it out! Out! Murder! Murder! I did this as a joke, but this is great. I'm very happy right now.